Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India We'll talk about some general constructions of submodules. Um, so what do I mean by that? Suppose I have a R module M. So let me say R is a ring. M is an R module. Again, that means left R module. Now, um, here's one thing we can do. Suppose you take a subset. So this is suppose, so here's the first general sorts of construction that one can make. Suppose S is a subset, a subset of M. Okay, no further properties, just a subset of M, subset of M. Then we can define something called the submodule generated by S. So this is called the submodule of M generated by S. So let's give this this notation. Uh, angled bracket S, which is the following, it is the collection of all the following elements. So, I look at summation, uh, let us call it alpha i, x i, alpha i, x i, i goes from 1 to n, where well, n is 0 or more, alpha i's come from my ring R and x i's come from my set S. Okay. So, this is of course, uh, well, what is this? This is all finite linear combinations, if you will. So this this thing here, what I call alpha i x i, is the sort of the the scalar multiplication that's given uh, because m is a module over the ring R. Okay, so the submodule is just all what we would call linear combinations, finite linear combinations of elements of S, and uh, this is sort of uh, what you would call a span in a vector space. Now observe that, uh, it's, so it is easy to check that this is in fact a submodule. So here is the following fact, S is actually a submodule because I mean the, the, the uh, submodule generated by S, this set here on the right hand side is closed under addition and because you, you add two such terms, you again get another um, linear combination and if you multiply such a linear combination on the left by some element of the ring, you just get some other set of scalars, some coefficients in front, that is all. So this is a submodule. The other little thing to check um, or uh, note is that uh, when I say n greater than or equal to 0, so there is this one vacuous case which uh, also we are taking into account if you wish, which is if you know if you put n equal to 0, then it is an empty sum, so we think of that as just the element 0. Okay, now, um, uh, so I should just say that if I put, if in my definition, if I take n equal to 0, so this is just some little uh, care about vacuous definition and so on, I mean you can ignore it, uh, n equal to 0 gives rise to the empty linear combination and the empty linear combination is, is defined to be 0. Okay, now, um, so we have, we have defined the um, submodule generated by a set. If your uh, ambient module is actually a vector space over a field K, then given a set S, the submodule generated by S is just what you would call the subspace generated by S. Okay, so that is the first general construction. The second general construction is suppose I give you M, which is an R module. And if I give you a collection, so um, and suppose I give you a collection of submodules, so M i i belongs to i. So this is some indexing set. I give you a finite or infinite collection uh, is a collection of submodules. It's a collection of submodules of M. Then we can form what's called their sum. So this is called this is another submodule. It is called the sum of m i, i belongs to i. 
This is defined as, follow, as follows. I take the union of all the MIs. Okay, now this is just some subset of my ambient module and I take the sub module generated by this union. Okay, so, I have just defined uh, in definition 1, I have told you what the sub module generated by a set is. So, I just apply that definition. Okay, so, this is called the sum of MIs called the sum of the sub modules. That is the definition again it is a sub module because it is the sub module generated by a set. So, here is a here is a little exercise show that the elements of the sum look like the following or prove the following equality that the set of the, the sum m i comprises precisely the set of elements of the following kind. Uh, they look like finite sums. So, this is i belonging to i but the, uh, I want the sum to be finite. So, m i should be 0 for all but finitely many i for all but finitely many i n i okay. and m i is belong to capital M i for all i. So, it is uh, finitely supported sums if you wish or finite sums of elements from one from each mi. So, prove that these two are the same. So, these two definitions if you will. So, what we gave as the definition and this alternative description are actually the same set. Okay, So, that is an easy verification. Uh, so, let us do another uh, example here. So, if I take r to be the ring of integers and if I just take two sub modules to be say 2 z by which I mean all the even numbers and I take the sub module 3 z which is all the odd numbers. Okay. So, so the ring is z and the module is also z here. So, I am taking the ring thought of as a module over itself. So, of course, sub modules as we saw before are just ideals. So, I take the even numbers and the odd num and the multiples of 3 they are both uh, sub modules here. And it is interesting to ask what is the sum of these two guys. And here is the exercise prove that the sum of these two sub modules is in fact the whole module set. Okay. And uh, more generally if you have, so here is okay, more generally. So, you can prove this using either of the two descriptions. So, more generally if I take uh, sub modules of z which are all of the following kind various multiples. So, let d i s be um, integers which are at least 2. So, if I have a um, let us say a finite collection of sub modules. So, this is i e goes from 1 to some r. So, I take these multi multiples of d 1 multiples of d 2 and so on. Then their sum. So, this is a sub module of z i e equals 1 to r show that this is nothing but d z it is again a sub module of the same kind where d is nothing but the g c d of all these numbers. Okay. So, again this is something which is um, maybe something you have seen before, but just uh, put in the language of sub modules other than ideals. Okay. So, that is the second general construction which is sums and the third construction is of sub modules is intersections. So, if I take an arbitrary collection as before, so if m i s are a collection, so this is a collection of uh, sub modules of m, then I can talk about that intersection of m i which is just the set of all elements which belong to all of them the usual definition i belongs to i m i is also a sub module. Okay. And again the verification is more or less uh, straightforward. So, I will just leave that to you.